Okay. One question. <laughs> Why Tottenham? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I thought we were going to forget about that, <laughs> no. that part. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little secret. Really? Wow. Hello and welcome to Ironcast. We've got a big guest for you today, a big co-host as well, Anton Ferdinand's here. Thank you. 92 appearances for West Ham, 33 goals. Freddie's going to get you. Welcome back to West Ham, <laughs> Thank Freddie you Canute. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Oh man, you're still you're still a, for me a box office name. I'm so <laughs> glad you're back at West Ham. It took a while. Um, I remember like going back. Your debut for West Ham was yeah. just it's a, it's a game everyone talks about, but yeah. for not necessarily for you because <laughs> it's the same game in which yeah, Paolo Di Canio scores yeah, the yeah, scissor yeah. kick Wimbledon yeah, yeah, at yeah. home, yeah. but you scored down the other end as yeah. well. We went two one, yeah. and the West Ham fans are chanting. Harry, sign him up. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember perfectly uh, that day. I was almost going to be the star of the day, but Paolo <laughs> 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 just nicked it away from me. But yeah, it was a fantastic day. It was like for me, um, it was tough because I was changing club. I was just like, I hadn't had hardly play, uh, trained for, the, for, for, the, for, for West Ham. And the weekend arrived, I play. I score and yeah, it was really, really, I remember that day. It was really beautiful. Yeah, It, it was a good goal, by the way. Yeah. I know everyone talks about Paolo's goal, yeah, but yeah. your goal to, for, to be your first goal at West Ham on that angle, quick yeah. first time at the near post, it was a fantastic goal. And, and one thing that, because I was at the game as a fan, I was watching, mm. was obviously watching Rio. Um, but the biggest thing was watching you and seeing how laid back you are, mm. you know, <laughs> and, 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 as you probably understood the further you went on into your West Ham career, sometimes being laid back doesn't help you mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. because they want to see, the fans yeah, want to yeah, see yeah. you fight. Yeah. You know, but to see the way you were so laid back and, but done your job, laid back, confident, done mm -hmm, your job. Mm -hmm. And the way that the fans accepted you for that, yeah. for me, watching it from that first day, you couldn't have gone any better. So mm -hmm. I'd, I'd see the fans singing, signing him up, signing him up. How did that feel to you knowing that you no. came to a new place and that was Yeah, happening? no, it felt good. But I think the, your analysis is very interesting because obviously uh, since the academy, some coaches were like criticizing me for being too laid back. I could do much more. And I had a particular coach, I remember in Lyon, who was like after me big time. You know, he was pushing me and I've improved a lot with that guy. You know, it was crazy. It was old school, you know. At mm -hmm. the time, it, you, it, they couldn't care less about how they speak to, to the youngsters. So it was very tough on me. And But it's true that it, this is a criticism that I've received a few times. And I remember when I arrived here, you know, the fighting spirit here and... And sometimes even if you know that the ball is going out the pitch, you have to chase it and even ta yes. tackle to try to, even if you know you're not. And I was not like this, to be honest. And um, But still, I think, as you said, it matched at some point. They understood my style and um, I was still obviously fighting and learned a lot from my period in, in West Ham because it was like week in, week out, like fighting against monsters mm -hmm. at the back etc so so yeah no i learned a lot um i mean yeah straight away i have to tell you west ham will stay in my heart because that's the first team my first uh, i mean team away from home uh from back home uh, lyon i grew up in lyon and that's where i really learned to 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 become and start playing as a man and and live my life as a man and mm -hmm. and learn how to deal with uh, yeah with good moments and low moments as well etc so so yeah no for me it's 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 a big big uh, period of my life Wicked. yeah i was chatting to anton because um i thought that one wouldn't go i can't remember if you take it on your left foot but i always thought you were left-footed but anton was telling me saying to me you you were good on both feet like in defending in training <laughs> sessions you were just as good on both foot what foot are you both footed? No, I'm I'm right footed, but Told I you. think from the academy, <laughs> um, from the academy time, we learned a lot to uh, to to work with both feet. Training session, it was like you have to be comfortable with with both feet. So that's why I, I mean I scored a few goals with my shooting with my left foot as well uh, when I was playing. But I think yeah, it's about. But I'm right footed, but it's just like um, yeah, I'm comfortable to use both feet. Yeah. And when get, thinking back to your debut, I remember at the time thinking like you were a relative unknown. That like mm -hmm. we kind of 
it was back in the day when it was relatively rare to get like big foreign signings mm-hmm. come in and West Ham fans didn't know anything about you. But looking back, you had played 40 times for uh, Leon before you came to us. You mm-hmm. scored nine goals. Mm-hmm. So you were, how come the transfer happened? Because it looked mm. like going through your stats, you were playing fairly yeah. regularly like in and out of the team. This is interesting. I think uh, maybe you have to ask uh, Harry <laughs> uh, because, because I heard a story, but maybe you can confirm with him. He, he, he actually came to watch a game uh, which was... If if I'm not wrong, Marseille, Olympic Marseille, Olympic Lyon in Marseille. But he was actually following him or maybe his scout or whoever. He was following another player. And I played that game away from home in Marseille. And uh, when I had a little argument with my club in Lyon and I, I was looking to go out the club, he uh, remember, and I think he was in contact with maybe uh, my agent at the time was Pap Duf. Uh, um, big agent at the time uh, in, in, in France. And um, he said, oh, yeah, I, I know which player you're talking about. And I saw him in Marseille, et cetera. And that's how it came about. So he knew me from somewhere, like for, from, from some games uh, I've played in, in, in France. But I don't really know how it happened. Yeah, but, but did, so did Harry speak to you? How did, how did the deal work? Uh, no, at the time it was all through my agent. He told me that I had, uh, I had uh, actually I had a little, um, yeah, as I said, misunderstanding argument with my club at the time. So I was with, I didn't have any club, so I was literally training on my own in a park every day oh, for man. like. But it, thank God, it didn't last too long, like um, five, six days, and that offer came. And uh, that's why I say when I came for the first game, I had like maybe 10 days without proper training at a game, nothing. Um, That's that's hard, by the way, you know that, not training with a team and then having to come and train with a team for 10 days and then play. Could you speak English as well? Um, school English, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, when I arrived, uh, like East London, I said they lied to me at school for all these years. <laughs> this is this is not English I learned. So on one side, there's something wrong, but I don't know which side. <laughs> uh, yeah. And when when you arrived at West Ham, obviously the team that you arrived in was full of fantastic players who became great players, yeah. not just for West Ham but for <clears throat> England. Yeah, you know. Um, did you know anything about the young players that were coming through at the time, the likes of Rio, Lampard, yeah, Joe, Joe Carrick? Do you know anything about them? I didn't know much, but just when I arrived, um, to be honest, I didn't even know much about West Ham. I knew the club, obviously, but I was not really following um, in, in detail. And as soon as I arrived, yeah, everybody made sure I understand what kind of club uh, it was. And they spoke about all the youth, the, the good youth system and all the youth that are pushing in the first team. And um, yeah, so straight away, I, I, I came across like uh, Joe, Rio, uh, Frank, uh, Michael. Uh, I mean, it was a fantastic team and it was mm-hmm. a, good, a good blend because there was also very experienced players yeah. as well. And um, and yeah, yeah, it was a really exciting team. Yeah. How did you fit in? Because you say there's there were senior players that day. You're quite uh, quiet, composed, mm-hmm. but then you had the likes of John Moncur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was yeah. crazy, yeah, yeah. as everyone speaks about. <laughs> oh you know, God, yeah. uh, Neil Ruddock. Yeah. He was crazy. How yeah. did you fit into that? First of all, the setup was, for me was completely different because it was very much you were talking about laid back. But I think here in Western, when I arrived, I thought it was quite laid back because. <laughs> In France, this is very, very disciplined, especially when you come from like some some of the big clubs, big academies. Yes. You have to, you can't use your, mo- you couldn't use your mobile. You on the bus on the way to the to the to the to the game, you couldn't really speak with your mate or laugh or stuff like this. And I arrived here, and it was like completely different. It was very much more relaxed etc i arrived to my first game against wimbledon in the dressing room first of all you could dress the way you want 
with the you remember yes. with the suit but you could choose the way yes. by the way rio is the champion in choosing the right <laughs> it was like picking some colors yeah. and some i say wow this is like and um and i, you, I wore them years later because they got handed down <laughs> to me good, i wore them that's a good thing i wore them and yeah and the the the, f the first day i arrived in the dressing room the music like very loud people like talking laughing and so i said wow this is like for me it felt like refreshing And um, and yeah, the the I I got on well with everyone, but I saw some yeah very very funny characters. <laughs> and at the beginning, I couldn't understand the word. To be honest, <laughs> I just noticed everybody was laughing every time John Monker was speaking, etc. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, brilliant. And, like, how was it like training in Chadwell Heath? I guess back in 2000, I don't. I guess you're not having like player services. There's no one to help you settle in. Were you kind of like just left? To your own mm -hmm. devices a little bit like yeah i mean i arrive in uh, at the training ground and you know in france we have a we have a, a habit uh, which is every morning you arrive and you shake hands with everyone yeah and in some countries it's like this slavin bilic used and, to do that didn't he i think he used to come exactly. when he was manager, yeah. so i arrive i don't know anybody i arrive in the dressing room and i start shaking hands with people were turning their back so i just tap their back and I say okay and they were looking at me like i'm crazy and uh, i remember um mark vivian foy he mm -hmm. was there in the dressing room there was uh, there was him speaking french and uh frank keller uh, mark keller, mm -hmm. mark keller. and uh, Marco, Vivian Foy, told me, no, you don't need to do that here. You just say hi <laughs> in the morning and that's it. <laughs> But the first day I remember was like just greeting everyone, etc. And um, and yeah, yeah, but it was, it was, it was, I think straight away I got uh, the first, but because my first game was like three, four days after I arrived and I scored. Uh, so it helped me oh, yeah. big time to to settle in and and yeah, that's it. Yeah. They're on that game, Wimbledon, Paolo scores, you score. And it felt like straight away, you and Paolo seemed to have a really good mm -hmm. connection. Did it feel like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you all know him, very talented, um, very crazy. Uh, we were very different. Uh, but I think, yeah, in terms of the, the pitch is something else, you know, and and uh, we got on well on the pitch. Uh, it was really nice and an honor to play alongside him and and see his, uh, his talent and genius, you know. Uh, And um, yeah, yeah, I think we had all together a very talented team. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna go back to my young Anton as a fan, mm -hmm. and I remember watching you right from the stand at Upton Park, and then when a the ball got played to you from a goal kick, the way you'd get up in the air and hang in the <laughs> air, and at first everyone's thinking you're gonna head it, but then you just bring it down in your chest. Yeah. The way you hung, and I remember watching it going. Wow, <laughs> that is unbelievable! How's he hanging in the air like that? Did you always have that, or did it come into come into fruition when you signed for West Ham? Um, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Before coming to West Ham, I had hardly played centre forward. Really? Wow! Almost never. What? So I I grew up playing like uh, I've played on the side, like winger. I've played midfield, number six. Number eight, um, I've played, uh, yeah, but but uh, it's only when I, um, as a professional, with the first team of Lyon, I've played either on as a winger or if it was a four four two, sometimes I was on the on the on the side, mm -hmm. uh, or four three three, I was also a winger, more on the side, and um, but I've played a few games as number nine uh also in Lyon mm -hmm. but not many not many and it's only when I arrived in London that that's it I'm a number nine now and you can see my stats when I arrive in West Ham they're not great I it's not bad for a goal in every three games pretty much yeah right? but what I mean is that it's not like because everybody says that it's when I arrive in Seville that really I scored many many goals but um I think I was still in the learning process of how yes. being a, a, a number like nine. a number nine and more yeah. efficient because I remember the first games I was playing, I was almost um, out of place. I was moving a lot, getting the ball in yes. my feet, dribbling uh, um, a lot. I, I remember there was an interesting stat um, 
in my beginning of West Ham, the first few months, I was one of the players who uh, were making uh, was making more dribbles. And I said, there, yeah, there is something wrong because at the end of the day, you know, I'm the number nine. I'm doing all this work for the teammates, etc., but I'm not really being at the end of the of the play to to yes. finish uh, of the actions. And um, and I started to learn a little bit and to be a little bit more efficient, to be there every time there's a cross, to be more like yeah. And and um, and and I kept on working on that uh, throughout my career. Yeah, this this is a mad thing to say, but I don't remember you being this tall. <laughs> like when you came in, I think it's because you were never really like a target man. It wasn't mm -hmm. like a big Andy Carroll. I mean, you've got the height for it, yeah. but we were you were playing with us like so much yeah. more with the ball at your feet. Yeah. I don't know if that's how we played at the time. Yeah, it's but, weird, uh, yeah, I guess because uh, I was not really a number nine before because I I learned to play ball in the feet. Uh, I I was I played midfielder a lot. Uh, I've played uh, on on the right side, so I was able to dribble as well, go on one v one situation, um, and uh, and and maybe that's why I was not really the kind of target man. I could do that, and I learned mm -hmm. to do that to to uh, to be more as a target man. But I think it allowed me to be a little bit more flexible and mm -hmm. and complete in terms of my style. So I could as the ball in the feet, mm. but I could go also um, in, in, in space. People were thinking I was not so quick, but I was actually... <laughs> he was, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah. So, so it, it allowed me to adapt a little bit to the situation, yeah. Yeah, so you came on loan straight from your debut, you're playing incredibly. And I remember West Ham has really wanted you to sign. And in the summer of 2000, mm -hmm. it actually happens. You become a permanent West Ham player. Was there any debate around it? Was it, was it always going to be the fact you were signing for West Ham? No, for me there was no debate from my first game uh, when you know I knew it went well. Uh, I learned really afterwards that like they wanted to sign me. And for me, there was no question. Uh, yeah, oh, I wanted man. to stay here. It's crazy because you know what? A lot of players have this. I say it all the time. But a lot of players have this. West Ham has this impact on a lot of players. Mm -hmm. You know, and to hear it from you, Freddie, I think it it just reiterates how special the football club is. You know, because every, everybody that comes here, they they get a rapport with the fans. Yeah. They love playing in front of the fans. Yeah. And it almost comes a place where I, this is where I need to be and where I want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. So to hear that from you, yeah. someone coming from Leon yeah. on loan and then signing permanently, yeah. it just reiterates how special this football club yeah. is. Yeah, yeah true. In your second season, I want to talk about one pass for a goal you created. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea? Oh, oh, one, oh, two season. I'll give you a clue. It was our Old Trafford. Through uh, to Paolo Di Canio in okay, the fourth yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this is perfect kind of Freddie Canute because you've got the ball at your feet at Old Trafford and you always seem to have so much time on your hands. And you see when you watch it back, Paolo makes that little run in behind it. And then as cool as you like, you just slot it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, when he, he, he... It's when... When Bartes keeps yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you think it was offside? Uh, no, I was hoping it was not falling into Barthes' yeah, yeah. trap. I was hoping because I felt it was not uh, offside. So at least I was hoping it was not like being disturbed, etc. But Paolo is like, <laughs> was already an experienced player, so it didn't work with him. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, because I watched it back and I saw after, after the goal goes in, you were kind of the last to join the celebrations. And I wondered whether you were just hanging back like... He's going to put his flag up. He's going to like, because you have a better view of it than anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it's true that uh, players generally, we, we always, the first one being cautious about, yeah, the, the, the offside rule, uh, being a bit cautious. But on that particular instance, um, I, I felt it was, it was onside, yeah. We actually had a good cup run. That, I mean, this is one of many years that I thought we were going to win the cup that year because mm -hmm. we beat Manchester United. But it, we played Tottenham at, uh, at Upton Park in the quarterfinals, I think it was, and lost 3-2 mm -hmm. in a game that just seemed to go end to end. And it seemed like we might do it, but it just fell away at the last minute. That felt like a real chance to win something during your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I got introduced very early to these kind of games, you know against Tottenham, yeah. Arsenal, and the rivalry between those clubs, etc. I mean, this is this is a big thing in London. Where where in in Europe you can see so many derbies, big derbies like yes. this, you know, this is crazy. So that was one of the big highlights playing here, yeah. What was your favorite derby <clears throat> with West Ham? What was your favorite London derby? Uh, to be to be honest, anyway, every time we were playing against big teams, uh for me 
it, it felt like a derby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it didn't matter if it wasn't even in the same city. But uh, but yeah, playing against Arsenal, you you have this special uh, motivation. I feel, um, and you know, I'm not from London, so I don't have this this. It's not personal. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. It's not personal. I know, you know, when you grow yes. grow up there and you 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 want to smash, for example, Tottenham or yes. Arsenal. It's, for me, it was just like extra motivation because because I felt straight away that yeah. For the fans, for everyone, this is important game, and these are big teams as well around in London. So many big teams, so yeah, we we wanted to make a big point in in showing that yeah we we're the hammers, you know. What yes. I mean? So straight away, I, I felt that that passion. Yeah. Yeah. So in the second season is the one where kind of Harry Redknapp departs, and if I had to put my finger on one thing that started to go wrong, it would seem the sale of Anton's brother Rio. Uh, to to lead at the time, it felt like that was the moment we had all these amazing players, some of which we touched on there: Frank Lampard, Michael Carrick, Joe Cole. The list mm-hmm. goes on. Mm-hmm. But when Rio left, yeah. it felt like we lost something as a team. Did did it feel like that on the inside? Yeah, yeah. Rio Rio was like yeah something, but it was difficult to to uh, to cling onto him or to to keep him much longer. It was like such such a such a talent um, and such a good guy. I have to say, you know, uh, Rio, uh, maybe you don't know that, but is the first, no, Marco was the first one, Marco Vivian Foy. He invited me to to his place, etc. Mm-hmm. But Rio, after training, was telling me, okay, come with me. We're going to eat in a Caribbean restaurant. Yes. Restaurant. It was really, really friendly and straight away wanted me to feel to feel good, etc. And um, and yeah, but on on the on the pitch, it was like a monster, a monster. It was difficult to to keep him much longer. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel Anto when when your brother left the club? Like, yeah, it was it, it was That's been weird for you. It was weird for me. Um definitely was weird for me when he left the club, obviously being a fan and understanding and how good he was and how important he was for the team. Uh but then also understanding for him as a player mm-hmm. why he wanted to go, you know. So it, it was very very hard for me. Um but you did feel as a fan, like you said, when he did leave, things just didn't seem the same mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. You know, we was we was known for a team that played from the back. Yeah. That everything came from the back. The minute he left, yeah. almost that that changed. Mm-mm. Do you know what I mean? It almost that 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 type of the way we played changed. You know, and I think we had p- the personnel that we had, likes of Freddie, Trevor Sinclair, Paolo De Canio, Lampard, Carrick. They wanted the ball on the floor. Mm-mm-mm. Joe Cole wanted the ball on the floor. And it was almost like that stopped happening as yeah. much, you know, and, and I think that's where the change was. Mm. Um, but we had a team that, actually, was it the year after? Yeah, yeah. The year was after was Glenn, the, Glenn when Glenn Roder um, took over yeah. as, as a manager. For me, I don't know about you, he was a great coach yeah. for me. I, what was he like with you, Glenn Roder? He was a great man. He was a great man. Honestly, and uh, I don't know if I can say that, but maybe too nice. Yeah, you know, a lot of people say that. Yeah, it was it was really really nice. So maybe sometimes it was difficult for him maybe to impose a little bit the 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 discipline he wanted to impose or the or what he really wanted to to do because he was really really a, a great coach and 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 a very good person. Yeah, yeah. There's a quote. There's a quote. I think it's by Arsene Wenger. They said that the, the, the talent West Ham had in their dressing room around the time you were there, they could have gone on to win the league if mm-hmm. the conditions were right. Mm-hmm. You played in some great teams, like mm-hmm. Seville especially, won a lot of trophies. Like, did, How do you feel looking back on that West Ham team? Do you think no, this things is, could uh, have been different? Yeah, no. The, for me, this is the, the, uh, the most, I would say, yeah, one of the most or the most difficult part of my career. To the, I'm talking about the re- uh, year yeah. of the relegation. Yeah. For me, this I st- still can't understand. You know, with the with the players we had, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. It it it. I don't think it ever happened. I mean, you. It's difficult to give value to the players who is better. And but 
I, we had a fantastic team. It's a it's a team that should normally play Europe, you know. Yes. What I mean, and and we got relegated that that year. And for me personally, it was very difficult to take because that last year I got injured big part of the season, and it felt like I I yeah. When you're a player, you know, you you want to be part of it, and even if you get relegated, relegated, at least you 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 rolled up your sleeves and you try to help the team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I felt like couldn't do that because I was injured. I was uh, like growing injuries, adductor injuries, and I, I, I missed big part of the season. So for me, it felt like I let the team down a little bit, even if it wasn't my fault. But it, uh, yes. I, so for me, it's a, it, it was a tough moment, honestly. We'll talk about that 0203 <laughs> season in a second. But uh, the first season, the full season that Glenn's in charge, we do really well, finished seventh, and it was like yeah. packed. Like we were consistent all year. Brought in the likes of Don Hutchison and, and Thomas Repka. How did it? How did it feel that first season? It felt like things were clicking. Could, could you tell in that first season with Glenn that the following season would be in trouble? No, no. I think we we we, we thought that we were growing. You know, it was. Uh, I mean, this this is one of the lessons football teach you, to be honest. You know, and you feel that you're growing. You we do a few good um, recruitment in the team, and um, and yeah, and 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 for some reason, the following season is it's not it's not ticking. There's something not working, and I remember this is the the first uh season like we got introduced about like a lot to discussions you know in in to try to find and i could feel it was a bit tense sometimes as well um and you know when it takes that direction you need you need someone really strong and you need within the within the team uh, in the dressing room and as manager to try to change the direction of that because you could you could see where it was going you mm-hmm. know what i mean really? and um yeah those moments are really really difficult but yeah no we couldn't see one year before that it was heading that that direction yeah what, what about when you got to pre-season the season before the the relegation season Could, was there anything in pre-season was, was any alarm bells at all in pre that preseason, you taking me back to. <laughs> I know, I know. The thing is, I think me as a West Ham fan, a lot of West Ham fans who lived through that time, it was such a good team. Yeah. And the fact we were forty-two points, it still comes up all the time. That yeah. stat, there's that. Yeah. Never has a team been relegated with as many points. Yeah. And when me West Ham fans like myself, they just want to dissect it yeah. and understand what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, it, I, I think, I think for us, it was even difficult to analyze and 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 put the finger on exactly what went wrong but um it's just like and we've seen with many like big teams and big clubs sometimes when it starts going that direction sometimes it's very very difficult when we talk about the crisis in the mm-hmm. in the in the dressing room and stuff like this it's i mean it's more the the journalists to be honest who like to to bring but if you're not strong mm-hmm. enough and and you don't do what is necessary to to change the yeah, direction of the of the, of the boat. It's sometimes it's you. Yeah, you you end yeah. up sinking, and uh, and that year that's what happened. But I can't explain more than that. Oh. Year. I I remember that year because that was the first year I started training with the first team. That year, um, when when we got relegated, um, and I remember my first training session, I was up against you and Jermaine Defoe. Okay. You know, and and I so was nervous. Tough, tough day at the office. I was and, nervous. And I was in. and I was asking myself, "This is crazy. How many Ferdinand <laughs> this club's gonna produce? This is." <laughs> but I, I remember coming in and training with you, and I, and as a fan, I knew how good you was. Mm-hmm. But then when I started training with you and playing up against you, I was like, "Wow!" Mm. But for my first session to be with you and Jermaine. You know, how did you f- find playing with Jermaine? Obviously, Jermaine, little big man, little yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. How do you find playing with Jermaine? Because for, to defend against both of you yeah. was was sometimes was unplayable. Yeah, well, uh, Jermaine, I he was like, he is like, um, I always considered him for some reason for like my little brother. It's mm-hmm. like he was he was younger than me and um, so talented, so talented. I think he got on loan to Bournemouth, Ooh, Bournemouth yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and uh, he was scoring goals for fun. And um, yeah, they tell me, oh, there is one player coming back from loan, etc. Very talented. And I saw straight away, really? this, this kid was like, 
a pure number nine, you know, in and around the box yes. was crazy. Yes. It was really, really crazy. And I think it was good because we had such a different style uh, that we got on well straight away. Um, he was more selfish than me, though. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, that's for sure. When he was passing me a ball, I know, I know, German was doing that. When, yeah. when he was passing me a ball, I could score. He was passing me a little bit too so long, to cross so it. I can cross it back <laughs> yeah. to him. But yeah. yeah, he needs to know yeah. that I I knew his trick all along. <laughs> yeah. And um, but but yeah, very 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 talented. And yeah, we had two different styles, so yeah, it, yeah. it ticked straight away. We had yourself, Paolo, Jermaine Defoe, and yet. Ian Pierce is up front for mm-hmm. a good deal. The central defender, Ian Pierce. Yeah. How did it feel to be sat on the sidelines carrying an injury, watching a defender take mm-hmm. the place that take the, the top spot up front? Yeah, I mean, if those those uh, characters is one of the like for me. Yeah, Ian Pierce was like the typical like English uh, with the strong spirit mm-hmm. uh, and. And you learn a lot from 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 those from the, from those players, uh, to be honest. Um, and uh, and yeah, it was it was interesting because he was very very strong, very tall, mm-hmm. so he could he could hold down the ball, he could do some different things. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I would prefer him uh, at more, yeah. more at the back. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do shooting practice with him? Did you? Have, did anyone know he was a good striker? Um, no, I don't think how this we thing came desperate. about. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. yeah, There's one thing about that relegation season. This is something that West Ham fans talk about. There's a sliding doors moment. I don't know if you are aware of this, but right at the start of the season, Arsenal at home, we're two, uh, I think we're 2-1 up mm-hmm. and you get a penalty to make it 3-1. We miss that penalty. We draw the game 2-2 in the end mm. and we don't win again at home until January, mm. like into the next year. And that's something that West Ham, it keeps me up at night. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. if that, is it, does that, when we got relegated and after that, all that summer maybe, was that something you thought about? Is this something that, the the thing is that when you when you get relegated, you start thinking of all the yes. games that you've, yeah. you've missed and you you thought at the time that, okay, this is bad, but okay, we have time. But no, it, sometimes it's just like, uh, yeah, you, you kind of um, tend to go back backwards and say, oh, that game, oh, maybe it's because of that yeah. game. We were so close. And, uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't help you to just yeah. go backwards like this. And as a professional athlete, you always have to look for, uh, like forward. And uh, But it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. But right at the end of that season, I think every West Ham fan thought we'd stayed up. We had that great win at Chelsea yeah. in the last game of the season at Upton Park. But the game before that, away at Main Road, Manchester City, yeah. we've established you're quite a laid-back player, but you scored the winner that day. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen you so passionate, you're pumping yeah, the yeah, air yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. You could yeah. see how much yeah, it meant yeah, yeah. to you to score that goal. Yeah, it's crazy because that that season, uh, at at some instance, uh, as you say, it didn't feel like a team that is being relegated, mm-hmm. uh, winning those big games, etc., playing well some some games and having so many points as well. It didn't feel like sometimes. Is that's why I think it was uh, hurting even more at the I, end. I yeah. remember that feeling and ran out of time because I was training a lot with you guys yeah. and I was traveling here mm-hmm. and there. I remember that feeling, that feeling of like, it didn't feel like we was in a relegation battle. Yeah. It didn't feel like that at all. Like the camaraderie was still good, yeah. you know, playing well here and there, playing good football. It never really felt like that for me as a young player coming in. You know, like normally a young player coming into that type of environment mm-hmm. where there's a, a relegation battle, normally it's hostile, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and, but it wasn't like that for me. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there. So I can really relate to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I think at, at no point of the season it was hostile. But you could just feel it was a bit tense mm-hmm. because you could feel that, oh, okay, we're playing with fire now. We, we, we better than this. You know, we have yeah. to have more points now. You know, we don't mm-hmm. want to be in that situation at the end of the season. So I think we, we, we could feel that. But, um, but yeah, we didn't think we were going to be relegated. Yeah, I think that was a bit of overconfident because of the talent that we had. It's, as I said, you know, football is teaching you big time. Yeah. And, and, and maybe there was a little bit of that. Maybe. I've got one question. Sorry, I've got okay. one question. Mm-hmm. Why Tottenham? <laughs> why? I thought we were going to forget about that. <laughs> no. That part. No, why Tottenham? Why? 
to be honest, you know that 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 season, um, that season, obviously the club relegated, uh, trying to sell as well. You know, is even you know financially sell mm-hmm. players that c- yeah. can be sold, etc. And uh, and it happened to a few of us. You know, what I mean. And me not being from London, I don't have the same, you know, no, I can never sign for that club or that club. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it was um, an opportunity to stay, obviously, in the in the Premier League. And it still hurts me until this day to to leave that club at that moment. Not only, to be honest, to because I signed Tottenham. We know footballers, you know, they need to, especially when they're not from... Um, that city they don't know mm-hmm. all the level of rivalry there is etc it's after when you look back and I stayed like five years in England I understood more and more the rivalry between the clubs etc but um, but it's true that for me it was uh, yeah a way to carry on and push my career and 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 try to to play at a level that I wanted to play in um, and 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 that's it really yeah, well, like, well, you went on to achieve this veal. I mean, it's just incredible. The trophies you won, was it? You UEFA for Super Cup, you UEFA for Cup, you nearly won the league, the Copa del Rey. You actually, did you, you were La Liga top scorer one season as well. No, you were close. I, I, at the end, I, I, I missed a few games and oh. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't. So I finished second or something like this second. But yeah, the yeah. form you were in, the goals you were mm. scoring at Sevilla, I, always, I, I was always thinking, I could have been at West Ham. Could have been a West Ham. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's uh, for me um, the way my career um, like progressed. Uh, sometimes I was thinking of that. Oh, it could have been in England. It could have been in West Ham. It could have been, you know, because I think that's um, you know there are some uh, how can we call that uh, early developers and mm-hmm. late developers, yes. you know. And I think for me, I was always learning throughout my career, and I think around. T- 27 28 that's when i was like at my peak not far from my peak and that's when uh, i went to uh, to um, to seville but i think my last year in 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 tottenham was was very good i i felt really really good um didn't score so many so many goals but i felt like so good. i gave many assists i i could feel that i i was reaching the best moment of my mm-hmm. career mm-hmm. and uh yeah sometimes i feel i i think about that it could have been also in england i could if i had stayed that that year but um but yeah definitely in 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 seville in spain i really really enjoyed my football it was a different approach uh i really enjoyed playing my football over there and, the weather yeah. the weather oh. That to be the weather. That's <laughs> slightly better than East London. Yeah. The weather was slightly better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, was um, the Spanish league, the comparison, everyone likes to compare the La Liga and the Premier League. Mm-hmm. For you, you played in both and done well in both. What yeah. league was better for you? To be honest, uh, early 2000, 2004, these, these years, 2005, um, I like to follow um, Spanish clubs as well, La Liga, because I, I, I've always liked, you know, more technical football. And now there's no much of a difference because now, you know, it's all international with yes. coaches from abroad coming here as well. Um, but, um, but, but yeah, I... I, I, I I found that as soon as I arrived there in Seville, it was like, you have to enjoy. You have to touch the ball. You have to get in contact with the ball. And that's, for me, it resonated like big time, you know. And and uh, we had maybe a little bit more, I would say, freedom to, freedom to express ourselves. Even training ground, everything almost was with the ball. Uh, as soon as you arrive, we play a little rondo and we... We make fun of each other. We, mm-hmm. it's, it was something else. also with the weather. With, you know, it's 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 another atmosphere altogether, and, um, and yeah, it went really really well over there. Yeah, I enjoyed. I enjoyed. It was a bit different. In England, was a little bit more physical and direct at the time, especially you know early two thousand. It was still yes. there were only a few clubs that really wanted to play the ball on the. Otherwise, the other clubs it was a mix, but many direct balls, etc. And in Spain. It was more the other the other way around. A few clubs that were playing direct football, uh, mainly clubs from the north like Bilbao, etc. They were playing sometimes a bit more direct and strong, 
and clubs, uh, other clubs that would put the ball on the floor. And uh, that's much more technical and tactical. So, so yeah, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Before I start asking you about like modern West Ham, I just want one final question from your playing career. So many characters you played with, Harry Redknapp, John Monker, Nigel Winterburn, just full of characters, Neil Ruddock as well. What's, give, us a, give us your best story from all those mad characters. <laughs> Who was the maddest? What was the maddest thing you saw? When you oh, played West Ham, in West Ham, there are too many. <laughs> no, there was there was some stuff. I can't say everything, but um, but yeah, there was a, the few, a few uh, a few episodes. Um, you know, I have to I have to admit that Neil obviously is a, is a legend, but I didn't know f- from the face and from I didn't really know him. And when I arrived in West Ham, he was not training, so I thought and he was certain age at that mm-hmm. time so i thought he was like maybe a staff <laughs> <laughs> staff member or something like this you know no disrespect yes and i because i saw him in the bath in the in the sauna etc i said okay maybe he's, and he was not training and on saturday i arrive and he's changing in the dressing room <laughs> i said this guy is a and after i said oh okay that this this is a legend you know and i i, di- I didn't know you know and um but but yeah, John Monker did so many so many stuff like this, you know. And you know, in, once in in the winter, he arrived only only with his boots. Yeah, his, I know the story. To, with the snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I know this, this this kind of, of stuff <laughs> it was, it was crazy. But yeah, no, a lot of uh, lot of lot of stories like this. Yeah. Yeah. So when West Ham obviously won the UEFA Europa Conference League in Prague, did you watch? Were you still cheering on the Hammers? To be honest, I watch some. Ga- I don't watch all the games, uh, but I watch some games, and I was really, really happy about that. Uh, I thought it could be a big, big boost for for the club that is doing well uh, for the last few seasons. Still struggle a little bit to have this consistency, uh, but it's it's building, it's building, and yeah, from afar, I always uh, follow a little bit, yeah. Wanted to ask you about African Player of the Year. You won it in 2007, and we've got Mo Kudus. It feels mm-hmm. to me that he's got a real chance of winning it. What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I've discovered him not so long ago. Uh, he's really, really talented. He has, he has, he has everything. He has strength, uh, running forward. He can play different positions. Mm-hmm. Uh, still quite young, but I think, yeah, he's one of the most exciting African footballers around uh, these days so yeah it definitely has a chance for me oh freddie thank you for the chat thank you, so thank much you. and if you unearth the next mo kudus call west ham do not call tottenham hotspur okay <laughs> and we'll forget about the whole thing that happened in 2003 uh thank you so much for joining us thank you freddie canute cheers anton and thank you for mm. listening we'll catch you next time on ironcast until then come on you irons <laughs>